Excellencies and Reverend Fathers, at the conclusion of our NISF, it is good to return to how we began. And how we began was not five days ago. How we began was more than 2,000 years ago when the rector of the first seminary was the Lord himself. And there were only 12 seminarians for formation. But after that rectorship of the Lord himself, the seminary system as we have it now is a legacy of St. Charles Borromeo of the Council of Trent. San Carlos Borromeo wrote down the seminary system as we have it now, as we live it now. So what is there left for us to do as we return to our seminaries, dioceses, after this coming together? San Carlos Borromeo began his ministry with a simple motto, humilitas. And at the conclusion of our coming together, I believe that should be our take-home word, humilitas, humility. But humility is a very tricky word. We had a father in the seminary who always stressed, be humble, be humble, be humble. But one of our co-seminarians who was eventually expelled from the seminary quoted our professor by saying, be humble, be humble like me. He was expelled. Because humility as a tricky virtue is not something you be proud of. What is humility? What is the sign of humility for us in seminary formation and priestly formation? The first word about humility is thanksgiving. A humble person is always grateful. And a grateful person is always happy. So humility is the key to joy. So be happy priests. Be priests of joy. The gospel is the gospel of joy. And the lesson is always the lesson of joyful discipleship. If we can only spend all our lives as priests, all, all our days as seminary formators, just thanking the Lord every day, we would be saints at the end of it all. The obstacle to holiness is an ungrateful, complaining heart. I know sometimes Seminary formation can be stressful, but make it a point every day on waking up or before going to sleep to say to the Lord, thank you, Lord, for this mission of formation. Mission of seminary formation, mission of ongoing priestly formation. Thank you, Lord, for this because it is such a great gift for me. And uh, Lord, help me to become a saint in this ministry of formation. The second phase of humility after thanksgiving is in the words of Thomas Aquinas, humility is truth. In other words, the obstacle to Truth is pride. And you can almost predict proud people are really, at the core of it, liars. 
pride and deceit. Pride and falsehood go together. Magkapatid yan. Kayabangan at kasinungalingan. So in the same way, truth is humility. Humility is living in the truth. But what is the path to truth, you're going, you will ask me? The path to truth is found in the final statement of the Synod. It is listening. You want to know truth? You want to discover truth? Listen. But the listening that accompanies our search for truth should always be a listening in the spirit of conversion. A listening that does not lead to conversion is the listening of the deaf. A listening that does not lead to metanoia is the listening of the proud and the stubborn. Listening should lead us to conversion. It should lead us to a change for the better. And that is what humility in seminary priestly formation is all about. It is the mission to listen, and it is the mission to be open to change, having listened. So humility is thanksgiving. Humility is also truth. The third T for humility is transcendence. To transcend is to go beyond. To transcend is to go beyond what the eyes can see. It is not just to cross over. It is rather to fly high and see with the eyes of faith what the eyes of the body are unable to see. In other words, Transcendence is actually another word for mystery. That mystery, that tremendous mystery that recognizes I am so small and the mystery is so great I am unable to comprehend. People who are proud will just deny mystery. People who are proud we just say, I understand it completely. But we are not able to understand completely. We must accept that there are things too transcendent, too mysterious. And we just have to recognize our smallness, our littleness compared to that mysterious transcendence. And that, my dear brothers, is our mission. We are called to be men of mystery. And in the words of St. Paul, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. So with regard to humility and transcendence, my pleading with you, my dear brothers, is do not demystify our priesthood. Do not make it too ordinary that you rob it with that sense of mystery. The mystery of the priesthood must be preserved. The mystery of the transcendent priesthood must be safeguarded from the bland, from the ordinary, from the familiar. The priesthood must remain unfamiliar because in the old spiritual books we were always told we are living in this world even if we do not belong to this world. That sense of mystery, that sense of wonder, that sense of transcendence that says the priesthood is greater than me. And uh, in the words of St. John Vianney, priest of God, you will never completely understand how much God loves you as a priest. Because if you would understand, you would die. Because the mystery is so great, 
to be contained by our limited minds and our limited hearts. So there you are. Please take home San Carlos Borromeo with you as you return to your seminaries, to your dioceses, promoting vocations, and sustaining our brothers in the priesthood. Homilitas. Homilitas, which is thanksgiving, recognizing everything as gift. Humilitas, which is truth, which is discovered by listening and by conversion. Humilitas, which is a recognition of transcendence, that sense of mystery, that I am too small and God is so great, and I can only thank the Lord for entrusting to me this transcendent, this mysterious task of serving and leading God's people. So bottom line, my dear brothers, be humble. Be grateful, be honest, and keep the mystery of your priesthood. Stay in awe about your priesthood as on the day you were ordained. And do not allow familiarity to make you contemptuous about the mystery of our vocation. Keep the mystery. Preserve the mystery. You can only understand how great you are, as I said jokingly, but with a sense of truth, not in your pay envelope, but in life everlasting. Be humble, be truthful, be thankful, continue to be men of mystery, men who are stewards of the mysteries of God. And may San Carlos Borromeo be our guide, be our intercessor, be our example.